The last few weeks, we predicted every division in the NFL. So today, we will predict the playoff teams, the Super Bowl, and our NFL award winners. All right, so let's start off by ranking the top four in the AFC because throughout the weeks, we were ranking our division winners anyways. We might as well just get that out of the way right now. Division winners for me were the Ravens, Chiefs, Texans, and Jets. It was that, is that in that order as well? Mm, my, no, I'm just oh, saying those okay, were my okay, division yeah. winners. My number one seed in the AFC is the Baltimore Ravens. Okay. My number two seed is the Kansas City Chiefs. My number three seed, Houston Texans. And number four, the New York Jets. Do you, wanna, you want me to go? Then you want to elaborate? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. so... For me, number one, Kansas City Chiefs. Number two, Baltimore Ravens. Number three, Houston Texans. Number four, Miami Dolphins. Obviously, the fourth team is where we differ. But I guess I'll go quickly here. Chiefs, um, last year wasn't their greatest regular season. And because of that, and plus their division got even more weaker, I think they got stronger. Yes, they're missing Hollywood Brown at the beginning of the year. And yes, we don't know what's happening with um, Rushy Rice at the moment. But for the most part, I think they, sh you know, all th three, the top three teams here are all gonna play each other as well. I feel like the Chiefs will bounce back in terms of the regular season as well, and uh, yeah, that's why they went number one for me. Uh, number two, the Baltimore Ravens. I just feel like they always end up being top two one way or another. Number three, the Houston Texans. Um, similar vibe. They're weaker than the other two teams, so I kind of went like from best to um, best to worst in a way. Then Miami is mainly because. Their division is the hardest, and either way... Well, yeah, one of the hardest. <laughs> yeah, the division is probably... Yeah, so, me, Ravens, I have one just because I'm, I'm bought in on the Derrick Henry, Lamar Jackson backfield hype. Chiefs, I have two just because they're the Chiefs. Uh, they're going to be top two. I, I, can't, I can't put them anything lower. <laughs> and, I mean, yeah, division, like, so it, helps. it doesn't matter. They're the Chiefs. They're just going to be there. Um, and they somehow got better, which I don't understand. Number three, Houston Texans. Again, a, a clear Super Bowl contender here. Best division and best team in, a, in the AFC out South. And number four, again, same reason that why you have the Dolphins for is the same reason why I have the Jets. I just think their division record is going to hold them back a little bit. Whereas the other one, I, the AFC North, and the reason why the Ravens won, because that's the toughest division in football, is because I, like, I see Ravens as a clear one there. Whereas here, the Jets, Dolphins, Bills, I still have them as a mix. I still don't know my predictions fully even though you know, I gave you my prediction but it's that 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 was a tougher prediction for me another one I, I just think Ravens definitely clear Browns and Steelers and obviously I picked them ahead of the Bengals as well so five six seven for me now I have the five I have the Cincinnati Bengals number six I have the New York Jets and then number seven I have the Buffalo Bills all right so we kind of went similar number five I have the Bengals number six I have the Bills number seven I have the Dolphins the reason why my bills are six and your bills are seven is because in our division rankings, I ranked the bills second, you ranked the bills third. Yeah. So obviously because of that, you're going to have to put the Jets at six. And I also went in with a hype where three teams make it out of the AFC East. And I put Miami Dolphins as my seven seed just because they're still a solid squad. So for me, it was coming down to, I was guaranteed putting Bengals in. I was guaranteed putting whoever finishes second in the AFC East in. But, it, was, it would have been between Jaguars, Colts, and Dolphins, and I'd, I'd pick the Dolphins. So for me, like, honestly, if you look at it, based on this, the AFC East should be the toughest division because we have three teams in there. They're, for them, their average just drops because of the New England Patriots. Yeah. Otherwise, their top three are top, th like, a heavy top three, right? Yes. Um, whereas the other ones, you have a top two, and the other two are um, capable teams. So I went with the Bengals at five because I feel like them and the Ravens, as long as they're healthy, the Bengals are healthy, they should be like neck and neck fighting for the division, meaning the loser, like how last year's AFC East ended up being, will be the, like that fifth seed, sixth seed area, right? And to your point, the Jets, I feel like as long as Aaron Rodgers is healthy, they have a great defense, they should be uh, in. For me, my perspective, because obviously your perspective, you have the Bills higher than Dolphins, I was very, with the Matt Milano injury, because that happened after we recorded that division ranking, uh, as well I was very heavily considering not to put them in to go a little bit bold my NFC I went a little bit bold my AFC I was considering yes a little biased but I did talk myself with Indy but I took them out I was kind of looking at the uh Baltimore or the Cleveland Browns as well because last year they made it I'm not saying he will bounce back but I'm saying Deshaun Watson could ha at least have an average year they should be in the playoffs but ultimately I can't bet against Josh Allen at the moment because he's still 
is that uh, that team's main um, catalyst, right? So mm-hmm. I, I just went with that with the continuity in terms of the coaching and quarterback play there. So that's our AFC rankings. Let's move on to our NFC and our four division winners rankings, so our top four rankings. My number one seed, boring, Niners. Number two seed, Detroit Lions. Number three seed, Eagles. And number four seed, the Falcons. And judging by our same division winners, you have the exact same rankings. Yes. <laughs> so uh, why I have them there? Number Niners, I think, are the class of the, the conference. Yeah, right? no, no, the second no, best no just, in the NFL. that's the, that's the best uh, way to put it. <laughs> this is where it was a little tough. For me, I went Detroit here because I think the Eagles will be battling the Cowboys neck and neck, kind of like Baltimore Cincy are. And I feel like Detroit, yes, that division is tough and it's going to be interesting there as well. I still think they're a tier above the Packers uh, and the rest of the teams there. Um, Whereas the Eagles and Cowboys are still kind of like half a tier at the very minimum, right? You could argue full tier, you could argue same tier. I'm going to say half a tier because I believe that's what I believe. And... um, and then the Falcons four. Honestly, if they, they they're like the Saints from last year where we put them very high up. Yeah. I won't be surprised if they do become a two seed because they have the weakest division and they have the weaker schedule as well. Like if you look at their schedule in the last like what six last seven six weeks, weeks or should be all wins. It should be all six, seven, and all right <laughs> yeah. there, right? So like I won't be surprised if the Falcons go up somehow because that's what we project. But at the same time, I I I'm going to put myself back down to earth a little bit because we thought that with the Saints last year and this team still has a lot of new pieces coming yeah, into the so season. R- again, I gave the edge to the Lions. I think I, I agree with everything you said. That's kind of the reason why I put it. Another reason is a gut feeling and uh, this is my gut feeling. So it makes sense. I don't know why we always had the same gut feeling. But let's <laughs> talk about our three wildcard teams for the NFC. Did you go bold in any way? No, I have the, exa- I have the, I have the exact same teams as last year. Just All in right. a different order. Okay, go. My number five seed is the Green Bay Packers. Okay. My number six seed is the Dallas Cowboys. And the seventh seed for me is the LA Rams. I went Cowboys number five and I went Packers number six. We saw you just flip flop that one. And I actually, what I said when this draft, during the draft, I stuck with it. It was between the Rams. It was between the Bears. It was between um, even somewhat the Seahawks Buccaneers. I considered and the Buc- Buccaneers. I went with... I did go with the Chicago Bears. So three teams for you out of the NFC North. Quickly, my explanation is uh, Packers should be taking a jump. So I think, I don't think they. I think should they should be clearly in, in my opinion. Cowboys, they should be in, right? They they're stuck in the playoffs, but in regular season they'll find a way to make the playoffs. And the Rams is the reason why they drop a rank or a little bit for me, even though it's just only one spot, and they barely barely make it, is because. On the defensive side, and Aaron Donald retiring, and Raheem Morris leaving for the Atlanta Falcons head coaching job. So I wanted to go a little bit bold because we were a little bit boring with our um, division rankings as well. With this, I wanted to go a little bold because uh, we saw we saw some teams that made jumps the last couple of years as well and made some surprises. So yeah, you said the Cowboys perfectly; they're gonna battle with the Eagles. You said the Packers. I think they're, they're Jordan Love is the second half Jordan Love, so there's no debate about that. Like I said in the rankings. Chicago Bears over the LA Rams is a big question mark here. I'm probably you're probably wondering. Um, I just like their roster they built around Caleb Williams. I believe in the Caleb Williams hype coming into this season. I'm not saying he's generational, all right. I'm not saying he's gonna be that next Andrew Luck, but I still think he might have that CJ Stroud type year. Um, because they gave him the weapons. Their O line is slightly better, still question marks. And I trust Matt Eberflus leading that defense. I understand they're lacking some talent here and there. We'll see what they add during the season. But I believe that the Chicago Bears um, over the Rams, because like you said, the Rams have a lot of missing pieces on the defensive end and a lot of young pieces. Sorry, a lot of young pieces on the defensive end, but lost two huge pieces there. And I'm going to project the health, you know, is it going to stay, sustain throughout the year as well there? That's how I put All right, it. Su- I don't know if you you agree, disagree Super completely. Bowl predictions. I mean, I, I'm the usual one. I freaking fell off on the Rams last year so <laughs> I slept on the Rams last year so I was like alright whatever I'll give them I'll give them their fair shot I mean as long as all them offensively they're fine but for defensively you, the, Bears take fine. the Bears take is fine O-line again a little bit concerning uh, defensively I'm just really concerned about the defensive line there's no one other than Sweat in my opinion that could really step up uh, secondary wise they're all honestly decent they have Brisker they have Johnson but overall I think yeah Bears is a shout they're in the conversation for sure I just think too much of a young squad, right? I know they fair, have, have some veterans, but like Stafford, a veteran QB, tough QB. Stafford is one of those guys that will play through injuries and all this stuff. And I think as long as Stafford's on the field, the Rams should be fine. 
and uh, with Cup and obviously Nakua as well. But Super Bowl predictions. This is where I went a little bit bold. I feel like you went boring, so I'll let you go first with this one. Um, I have the Kansas City Chiefs in the Super Bowl again. I just need to see. There's a potential three P. I'm not gonna break what's already been going on right for the last couple of years. And there again, ever since Mahomes was there, has always been the AFC Championship game. So I'm not gonna bet against it. And they got better. I don't know if, how much of this is like a bold or not. I'm going with the Detroit Lions here. There's a special video coming out this week to explain why we have the Lions there. So I'm not going to get too much into it. So you guys got to tune in, hit that post notification bell and the subscribe button to know what, what we're referring to there. But I went with the Detroit Lions. Um, like I said, the NFC is weaker. The only team clearly ahead of them is the San Francisco 49ers. It's a one game situation. The Eagles, you could argue, could be same tier, half a tier above, whatever you want. Same with the Cowboys, sure. But I feel like the Detroit Lions upgraded heavily. That's I'm going to just leave that there. Yeah, so obviously, because of the video, I also have the Detroit Lions. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, everything you said and everything that will be in the video the next and upcoming days. Yeah. Other one, I went bold in terms of I didn't pick the Chiefs, right? And uh, So you switched it from the division rankings. <laughs> I, I low-key wanted to pick the Texans, but then I just feel like not yet. I feel like that's a little bit away. And kind of I mean, go, kind of go, yeah. Thing, you know? I kind of go with the battle of the, the rebuilds because Texans and Lions rebuilds are probably one of the best rebuilds that happened in recent memory. But I went with uh, my boy, Lamar Jackson, and the Baltimore he Ravens. Finally, he's finally getting over the hump? I, I I think he finally gets over the hump. He, I just think, uh, it just it's just time, you know? Like, some people just might have figured, like, it just is here to figure it out. I, again, roster is very similar. They were the one seed last year. As long as, you know, they just do what they did last year, except Lamar just plays a little bit better in the playoffs. They are unbeatable, in my opinion. Before I went boring... The, the, the reason why they're beatable was because of Lamar. Yeah. So if Lamar just plays his regular game, I know it's a big if. I don't think they could be touched. Wait, so you said Ravens will beat the Lions or Lions will beat the Ravens? Well, I said that's my Super Bowl. Oh, but you didn't say you, you didn't give the winner yet. Yeah. Okay. Um, Honestly, a sidetrack here a little bit. I was considering the Dolphins just because I wanted to go a little bit bolder here as well, but I just went boring because of the last couple of years. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't trust Tua. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going with the um, Kansas City Chiefs overall beating the Detroit Lions uh, for the Super Bowl. I went with the Baltimore Ravens. So, okay. So. Yeah, so I went with the Lions losing and uh, the AFC team winning because AFC is supreme. AFC is way better. And I'm not just saying that the Colts are in it, but the Colts are in it and they're just better. <laughs> and uh, simple as that, the AFC just is the more tougher better conference but that actually might work against them because if they're like beating up on each other whereas some of these the NFC Lions teams might just low-key take it <laughs> they just have like an easier path that's why I had the Niners last year but too. that's why there's a two-week rest yeah as well and but, uh, yeah all right so I'm probably stupid not paying the Chiefs but listen I'm tired of picking the same shit over the and over part of this business here is to go bold and go big so my big bold prediction I went bold in the rewards I'll say that okay I went my as of this point before you go to the awards my big bold prediction the Bears make the playoffs yours I mean, it's not that bold, but... Just the Chiefs don't make the Super Bowl. Yeah, I guess. You could, you could say that's bolder that, that way. Bold. But do you want to go to the award predictions? Do you want to go the top to bottom or bottom to top in terms of the importance of it? Let's start off with Coach, coach of the Year. Okay, so you want to go to the bottom. All right. And uh, my Coach of the Year... Actually, no. My number three, John Harbaugh. Okay. Not Jim Harbaugh. John Harbaugh. Number two, Dan Campbell. Number one, D'Amico Ryans. And the sole purpose is because... He didn't win last year. I feel like he'll just win this year just because because of what he did last yeah. year and this year. <laughs> I completely forgot he didn't win last year. And I remember now because I had that rant of why he should have won. But for me, number three was D'Amico Ryans. Um, for me, the coach of the year, like always, it's a narrative award eventually. So I went narrative heavy because, because of that. They're expected to be still the division champion to many people's eyes. And yeah. we said contenders. Others might agree. Yeah, the yeah. voters might agree. Uh, number two, this is where... You go check out our Atlanta Falcons video. They're going to get over the hump this year, we hope. So that's where I have Raheem Morris, which you might think would be the number one. But because I put the Bears in, this is going to be a Brian Dable type coach of the year pick when the Giants finally made it Matt as a wild card team. <laughs> Matt Eberfuss, right? Like you can't say it. Like if Matt Eberfuss leads this team to the playoffs, he should be coach of the year because, again, like you said, they're really I mean, there's the also different cases as well. Like, True. sometimes, like, the best teams should have the coach of the year as well. True. Like Shanahan. But and, I feel like coach of the year is on all And Reed all, and all these guys. I feel like in all sports, it ends up being a narrative type thing. All right, Shane Steichen, please win coach of the year. <laughs> Comeback player of the year. Number three, Kirk Chains. Okay. Number two, Joseph Burrow. 
at number one, Aaron Rodgers. So I have the same three different order. Number three for me is Joe Burrow. He could be the, one of the few repeat champions. Like, oh, sorry, not repeat, but like two a time. second two-time yeah, yeah. champ. Uh, number two, I went Aaron Rodgers. And then number one, I went Kirk Cousins. But I think Aaron Rodgers will be the pick because of New York uh, aspect there. Uh, I went with Kirk, uh, Kirk Cousins because of what I said about Raheem Morris. I feel like Kirk Cousins, the reason they brought him in is to get to the playoffs and hope it's the regular season award to get to the playoffs, win the division. They're both are coming off Achilles injuries, but I only went with Kirk Cousins because he is the quote-unquote lower-ranked quarterback between the two. Yeah. Defensive rookie of the year. I'm guessing, wait, elaborate on why Aaron Rodgers very quickly. Oh, Aaron Rodgers, I'm high on the Jets, right? <laughs> That's it. The reason why I'm high on the yeah, Jets yeah. is Aaron Rodgers is healthy. <laughs> it's as simple as that. <laughs> I just wanted to clarify that. <laughs> Defensive Rookie of the Year. This is probably one of the main reasons I, I actually wanted to make this video. <laughs> uh, number three, Terry on Arnold. I went different. No. I, no I, way I, we have the same I, thing, man. Right here, Terry, Terry on Arnold. Okay. <laughs> I, I want to okay, reason, reason why I have Arnold in there is just because he's going to be... He's going to be put in a situation where he's going to have to be he's really... The, he's the, he should be the lead corner in the safety. Yeah, lead corner, lead corner, guy. corner That's guy. exactly yeah. why I put him yeah, in. Yeah, I feel like he's just the only one there. Obviously, Bra- Branch is there. Branch is there. I swear to God, we, we did not If you guys don't share. realize... Why, uh, if you guys didn't believe we were brothers now, we are brothers now, We're not twin telepathy, but like... We're not being twins. Yeah. Number two. I feel like you might have this too. Dallas Turner. Dallas Turner. I was argu- I was debating <laughs> between... I thought you would have went Jared Verse. I'll be honest with you. I was like, yeah, Jared Verse because you put the Rams in. No. Yeah, yeah, but like Dallas. But Turner, I went Dallas Turner. Uh, yeah, D. Roy usually ends up being a lineman award. That's why I went here, yeah. Arnold. But number one, this both say it. Liatu, Liatu, baby. Um, Indianapolis Colts. Usually, this award ends up going to like the first defensive defensive guy off the board. Um, usually a pass rusher. Latu had an amazing camp. Had an amazing preseason. An amazing um, college year last year. Be starting now after the Samson Ebukam injury as well. Most likely should be starting. At least finishing the year starting, and he'll have an impact. Um, yeah. Just I mean, yeah, no. If he, I, no, we have full faith, and obviously we're saying this as fans, but we're also saying this as like an outside perspective that Layatu La- Latu could end easily end up with double digit sacks this year. Um, in my opinion. listen, if we're not being biased, you could look at NFL.com's and, predictions as well. They and also, and also, Colts D line is really good, so that might yeah. just provide. And him and Buckner, him, yeah, him yeah. Help him out. it'll yeah. give him opportunities of having one on ones and not really being double teamed because Buckner's going to take the double team, and him and then Pay on the opposite side could have one on one opportunities, and that's why I a think breakout year from him, yeah, well. potential breakout away from breakout year from Quiddy Pay. So offensive rookie of the year, I feel like this is I went boring. I don't know if you. Did. I went I went boring. Okay, so my number three, Jaden Daniels. Did you go the same? I went number one, AD Mitchell. Oh, number three, did you? Oh, yeah, Na- yeah Jaden Daniels. Number two, Marvin Harrison Jr. Yes. And number one, Caleb Williams. I just okay. Yeah, I think it's just pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, <laughs> I had the Bears going to the playoffs. Caleb Williams, a big reason why. I ha- I have I believe the Arizona Cardinals will take a jump. Marvin Harrison Jr. will be a big reason why. So the third one, he could go anywhere really. You could. Um, I went Jaden Daniels because yeah. I. I feel like he's a that he will be a the good quarterback. The, the main reason why I went Daniels is like, in the in camp so far, I feel like other than Caleb Williams, he's the only quarterback that really solidified his spot. Like May hasn't really solidified his spot yet. You know the Commanders are riding with Jaden Daniels, so I feel like that would just give him the edge. Even if like say May comes in like week four, week five, and plays to the same level as Jaden Daniels, Jaden Dan- Daniels has that extra week. So like. Yeah. By the numbers, he should have the and advantage I project because he played be, more. And I project him to be good yeah. as well. Uh, Depoy, um, I went TJ Watt number three. This is I went a little. I don't know if this is bold or not. I went boring with the winner, but I went a little bit bold. I went Aiden Hutchinson as my number two in this case. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, and then I feel like it's Micah's year, so I went Micah Parsons. Okay, I'll uh, say this: together. I went bold because I did not put Watt or Garrett in my list. Okay, right. Pretty, pretty, pretty little bit stupid. Okay, so it's still a little bit different. Number three, I went Nick Bosa. Okay. Number two, number two. Number two, I went Aiden Hutchinson. And number one, I went Micah Parsons again. I feel like it's Parsons' year to win. Uh, Bosa won. They have to rely on the defense yeah, a little more, in yeah, my opinion. Yeah, well. Parsons, Pars- it's Parsons' year, in my opinion. Right, Watts won. Garrett's won. Bosa's actually won, too, the year that Parsons was going to win. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this year is Parsons' year. Oh, boy. Number three, again, I went bold. In... Uh, Two of them, at least. I don't know <laughs> if you're going to match. but Number three, go. Garrett Wilson. Okay, well, wait, that, you definitely went bolder than me. Breakout year. Aaron Rodgers healthy. Garrett Wilson should get all the receptions. Yes, Mike Williams is there. But it's uh, it's time that Garrett Wilson's finally going to play with a proper quarterback. He's been getting 1,000 yards with shit quarterbacks. But this year, he could honestly almost 
reach 2000 if he gets Aaron Rodgers and he plays just the way he does. Number two, C Mac, Christian McCaffrey. So you didn't go Boulder, okay? Yeah, that one. I, I say I went bold on two of them. Number one, I mean McCaffrey's self is fine. I don't have to say that. Number one, I'm going with the psychopath. I'm on I'm on Ross St. Brown. Wow. Okay. So I did not go with him, so we didn't match. Okay. Uh, I considered him. I, I very much did, but. I ended up going a little bit boring with my number three with C Mac, Christian McCaffrey. Um, self explanatory, the best receiving run rush running back, both sides of the ball. Um, both sides of the sorry, running back perspective, catch wise and run wise. Um, number two, I went Tyreek Hill, so I went boring here. Again, I have Dolphins winning the division. How are they gonna win the division? Tyreek Hill has to go crazy like last year. And the number one, I went Bijan Robinson. Oh so wow. <laughs> yeah. I, it was between Bijan and um I'm going to be in the top three. Then I considered it. And then I'm like thinking, and that Falcons video we dropped, who was that guy that you put in again? Uh, it was Tom Grossi with his funny skits. So <laughs> that was in my head as well. When he says, Bijan, you could finally score now. That's the reason why I went with it. New new staff, new everything. I expect him with a decent, pretty pretty good O-line as well. He might finally show why he was that running back that was supposed to go super high uh, in the draft that year. As well. I really wanted to go bold on the awards and... Uh, I just feel like if the Lions are going to the Super Bowl, <laughs> Amon Ra again. I'm, I had I considered him. I very the reason much why it is because Amon Ra is the clear number one. Yeah. Right. Like where you have like, obviously yeah, Hill is Hill, but like when you consider like AJ Brown, right? You got to remember like, he's also regular. Season. Yeah, no. You, but when you consider AJ Brown, like Devontae Smith is a very good second option. Okay, Amon Ra. Yeah, Jameson Williams hasn't proven anything. That's why he might break out this year and be the second option. But I feel like the the level between Amon Ra and whoever his wide receiver two is. Is way different than like Hills, um, uh, the one the guys in Houston, obviously AJ Brown. So that's why one one of the reasons why I wanted him in fantasy as well is yeah. because he's gonna get all the targets. But MVP, most so, valuable player. The last award. So make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. We're gonna disclose our MVP now. I went number three. I ended up going with Jalen Hurts here, and uh, the reason why I'll just say I'll just give my explanation right away. I feel like Philly will bounce back. New offense, yes, it's Kellen Moore. I get it. Let's see what he does. But I feel like he'll find he's a regular season guy. He's pretty good with that. I feel like Hertz is gonna bounce back. I also didn't want to go very boring. I don't think Lamar is gonna come back and win it again um, this year. Number two, CJ Stroud. Right? I I don't think it's gonna be a sophomore slump for him. Unfortunately, as Indianapolis Colts fans, but self-explanatory, his offense got better with adding Diggs. Um, Joe Mixon's now in the backfield there as well with him. And I feel like he's slightly underrated coming into this year as well. Number one, though, I went boring here. I went Patty Mahomes. As I alluded to earlier, why they're my one seed, he did not have a good regular season himself. So he And to a guy for a guy that wants to challenge the GOAT status as well, um, he needs to show some hardware. And that's the reason why I went mm. with Patrick Mahomes. He showed, us, he showed enough hardware already. <laughs> but, like, you know, yeah. you have to get more. Okay, I went a little bit bolder as well, but... My number three, I am going with Jordan Love. Okay. Packers are supposed to take a jump. Love is going to be a reason why. He just got paid. So he's going to have to prove why his contract is going to be worth it. Number two, if the Buffalo Bills are going to make the playoffs, Josh Allen is going to have to be on his A game. And that's going to give him MVP conversation. And that's why he's number two. Number one, I went with the sophomore CJ Stroud winning the NFL's MVP. Reason being is... Just look at his rookie highlights. That that's the and reason. Stats, <laughs> <laughs> and then you add Stephon Diggs and uh, a better better offensive additions, and uh, that's just gonna. Yeah, I'm scared. And the defense I, will I, help. I, I, I'm a little bit scared. And the defense <laughs> will help his win record as well. <laughs> I, that as well. But yeah, no. Ultimately, this is our official season um, predictions of the playoffs, Super Bowl, and awards. If you guys want to check out our division by division preview, make sure you guys check out. We've been dropping those for the last couple of weeks as well. A couple of them might be popping up on the screen right now. So yeah, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button for that special video coming out tomorrow or in the coming days here and hit that post notification bell and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Peace.